Coming out later this week is Marvel's Black Panther, but back in the 90s, Wesley Snipes wanted to make a Black Panther movie and it just never came together. But we did get a trilogy of Blade movies, so today we are going to be ranking all three Blade movies from the worst to the best. Now before I get started, go ahead and tell me your thoughts down below in the comment section. Which one's your favorite? Which one's your least favorite? Give me your rankings. Let's have a nice lively discussion about this trilogy of movies. With that said, we'll go ahead and get started by looking at the Rotten Tomato scores. Coming in in last place is Blade Trinity with just 25%. In second place is the original Blade with 54%, and right above that is Blade 2 with 57%. That's actually kind of surprising to me, because Blade 1 and 2 are pretty well respected by movie fans, especially comic book fans, martial art movie fans, Wesley Snipes fans. We love the first two Blade movies, so it's pretty surprising that neither one of them is actually fresh, especially having rewatched them. They hold up pretty well. I also put up a Twitter poll. When I do my rankings, sometimes over on my Twitter page, you can see that link right down below. I put a poll up, get you guys' take on it. I asked, what is the best Blade movie? 11% said Blade Trinity, 39% said Blade 2, 50% said the original Blade. That's actually a little bit surprising to me. I was expecting even fewer people to say Blade Trinity because the internet kind of craps on that movie quite a bit. And I was thinking we might get a little bit more love or a little bit closer with Blade 1 and 2 since Guillermo del Toro did the second one and it gets a lot of love from a lot of people I've talked to. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with my take on it. And in third place is Blade Trinity. Now, to be fair, this is actually the movie of all of these that I watched the most. Uh, when we rewatched all these movies over the last week, my wife said to me, have we even watched these first two? We only ever watched the one with Ryan Reynolds. So even though I have this one last, it's kind of the most rewatchable for me in whatever re weird reason that is, because this isn't a good movie. It's a bad movie that has a lot of really enjoyable things in it. So we'll talk about the bad first. The plot is an absolute mess. There's so many plot lines. It's about Dracula. It's about the vampire's final plan and their blood banks of humans being held captive. It's about uh, the Night Stalkers. It's about uh, Blade being set up. I mean, it's about so many different things and the stories don't really flow together really nicely. And there's a reason for this, and that's apparently Wesley Snipes was a nightmare on set. Ryan Reynolds, David Goyer, and Patton Oswalt have all openly kind of trashed Wesley, Wesley Snipes in interviews when talking about this movie. Oh, I wish I was in Blade. That, the first <laughs> two movies are fantastic. I am in Blade Trinity. And, and by the way, I'm friends with the writer-director, and he agrees with me on this. If you just sit and watch Blade <laughs> Trinity, it's a D minus. It just doesn't work. <laughs> but if you know what they went through to get that movie made, yeah. it is an A plus. We were in Vancouver and Wesley Snipes was going crazy and he wouldn't <laughs> come out of his trailer and you'd walk by his trailer and this wall of, of pot stench would just be like, you, he would only answer to the name Blade. You, you couldn't call him. He would only answer to Blade? The Blade, yeah. He would communicate with, with uh, post-its that he would give to the director, and each one he would sign Blade. So. so for whatever reason, Wesley Snipes was not really participating in the process. So it was very difficult, so they didn't get a lot of stuff shot that they needed to get shot. And so the movie, watching it, it feels like a director trying to piece together what they had to try and make the movie work. There's even sequences in it where Blade is standing in a room looking out and just kind of like saying, use it, use it. And he's separate from everyone else. Everyone else is over here and you see them together and he's just saying stuff. And it feels as if they just cut together different takes of different things to construct a scene so they could move the plot forward. And so the movie feels very messy because of that. There's also some blatant product placement. There's some weird stuff where Whistler's daughter's putting in earbuds in the middle of a fight. Stuff that you go, I think I know what you're going for, but it doesn't make any sense. And it just felt like it zooms in on her, her iPod to show the front of it and just weird stuff like that. With that said, there's a lot of stuff that's really enjoyable in here. Wesley Snipes, we'll get into this later, he's just great in this role. Wesley Snipes is a star, he's a great action star because he's a legitimate martial artist, he's an awesome athlete and he can act and he's charismatic and fun, so he's great in this. 
The backup guy in the movie is Ryan Reynolds. So you got his wit, his charm. Once again, he's a very physical actor, so he shows up in great shape in this movie. This is like the movie where he first showed up and went all out trying to look physically in shape. And so, like, he's a great addition, has great chemistry with uh, uh, Jessica Biel. You got Patton Oswalt, so of course he's got some charm, fun, funny to him. So there's some nice dynamics to it. The action is good as ever. Um, these movies all have great action to them, and this one is no exception to that. There's a bunch of cool ideas, the way things are visualized. And so, if you just want raw entertainment, Wesley Snipes is fun to watch, Ryan Reynolds is fun to watch, the chemistry of the people who Wesley Snipes is in there is all very nice, and there's great action to it. So there's a lot to watch and enjoy in this. And I think that's probably why this is the one that I've rewatched the most. Also, you know, that man crush on Ryan Reynolds with me kind of helps. Jessica Biel's also pretty. So there's a bunch of elements that make this one very rewatchable for me. Well, not being a good movie. As I move into the top two, I have to pick one over the other, but they're actually very much neck and neck to me. I go back and forth as to which one I like more because I think they do... They take this world and they do very different things with it. They tell very different types of stories. So they're really neck and neck for me, but I have to pick one to put over the other. So coming in in second place is the original Blade. Now this is a cool movie that in a lot of ways feels so far ahead of its time because this movie's over 20 years old, 20 years old. Uh, I don't remember if it was 97 or 98 it came out, but 20 years old. It's a rated R comic book movie that has very cool fight scenes in it. Um, incredible world building, like little details throughout this movie of establishing this realm of um, vampires and their subcultures, how all these little elements work to it. You have other stuff where just outside of the vampire world, they do little details like people speak Esperanto, this language from like a hundred years ago or something like that that never was picked on. They just added these little details in there that make it feel like a lived in, developed world, not just, hey, we told a story here. Along the same lines, Wesley Snipes as you watch him in these movies, it's hard to think of who could be better in this role, especially the way he's visualized in these movies. I just don't know who would do this better. He's so charismatic. He brings the physicality. He looks like a guy that could tear these people apart. Um, he's really good at the fight stuff. And he's not trying to do a bunch of like flippy stuff that Jet Li might do or that Jackie Chan would do. He's just great at doing choreography and being fluid and throwing kicks that feel like they hit hard. And he just nails it in its wide takes. So you see it is Wesley Snipes doing this stuff. And it has a unique, interesting style style to all of it, so it makes for very cool action. Along the way, you get uh, Chris Christopherson as Whistler, and this is the cool mentor that just adds a nice dynamic to it that's hard, harsh in the way that he treats people in Blade, but you know there's a love there, a concern, and just these two guys trying to stop vampires. There's a brutality to these movies that I kind of forgot about. It had been a little while since I'd watched them. It's <laughs> so violent. There's so much blood, and just kind of even the, re the way Donald Longu's character's in it, where the whole movie he's getting his arm cut off and it's growing back and then Blade's shoving his face into uh, um, a cart that, or a, a subway that's driving by and you're just watching the flesh being ripped off of it. Just brutal, brutal stuff um, that just gives this movie a, its own distinct place in the world of comic book movies as a rated R comic book movie and there's not a ton of those that have been done well. Steven Dorff makes for a solid villain here who has an interesting dynamics or dynamic with the vampire councils as well as with Blade and that he's kind of the rebel against all of it, fighting all of it, while at the same time going back to kind of vampire mythology to try and make things happen and having a reverence for Blade and what he stands for. So a bunch of really solid things about this movie. Uh, where it struggles, I think, a little bit is the plot it has a lot of layers, subplots to it, a lot of elements going on. And so rewatching it a couple days ago, it didn't necessarily have the forward momentum at times that I felt it should have. So it kind of drags at times, kind of in the middle. It's unclear exactly where the movie's headed. Early on, there's some 
some odd ways that it deals with the perspective of the movie. So you have an intro sequence that this rave party with bloodbaths and blade shows up, beats people up. And then we kind of follow a body to the morgue. And then we follow this girl character. She gets bitten and she's supposed to be like our introduction to the world of blade and everything happening there. And so it, it's a little bit odd the way it kind of starts and it kind of goes on this little journey before the narrative gets started. So there's a few things like that, that just kind of stuck out to me that weren't perfect about it, but overall very, solid movie, a weird movie too. And I say that as a positive, um, just like the big, weird, gigantic, fat vampire that's like a slug-like creature, a bunch of interesting stuff about it that just make for a very fun, solid movie that this one really does go back and forth with number two as to which one I put in the top spot, because I think they do each do little slightly different things, a little bit better from each other. With that said, in first place is Blade. Two. And what makes this movie kind of an interesting follow up to the second one is they found the right dynamic to go with in this movie where it changes things up just enough that it feels like a natural continuation. It continues themes the world while feeling very different. The first movie has kind of a complicated plot with lots of subplots and characters and different things happening. Where's this kind of going? The second one is very streamlined with the plot. There's a new breed of vampire out there, so Blade teams up with the vampires to stop this new threat. Very simple, straightforward plot that's streamlined so we can focus in on that, having cool situations. In that, parts of it feel a lot more like a horror movie. So there's gore in the first one, but it doesn't really feel like a horror movie or like a monster movie. This one, because of the Reapers, just feels like a horror movie at parts where people are just getting torn to pieces, they're in the sewers and monsters are jumping out, and it's kind of terrifying, and a lot of that goes back to who directed it, Guillermo del Toro, and he's creepy monster design guy, and you see that in this movie. So it still has the blade and his sarcasm, it still has his attention with the vampires, it's still got all sorts of crazy awesome martial arts stuff, but it's also kind of this monster movie and the vampires because of the Reapers become really terrifying in this one. They weren't, they weren't really terrifying in the first one because Blade's just tearing people to pieces left and right with his sword. They're no match for him. He's got all these weapons. So they're almost just like cannon fodder to Blade. This second one, because the Reapers are so powerful and the vampires can't always keep up with them. It's so intense and it adds a new layer to the action with all of it. Um, and I don't have as many things to like talk about where it's positive, it's just a better, tighter film because of the streamlined plot line, because Guillermo del Toro is kind of really good with his design, with the monsters. It just does a few things and it does it really well. Where this one does struggle and where it kind of goes back and forth a little bit with the first one for me is this one has some special effects that look really dated, that even when it came out, they didn't look great. They tried to do some stuff where in the middle of the fights they wanted to add some extra flippy stuff to take it to a new level and having the camera do things that cameras can't actually do. And so it cuts to CGI stuff and it's really obvious. It's, it's not like a subtle effect, it's all of a sudden Blade is doing flippy weird stuff and then it cuts to Wesley Snipes actually throwing punches and it's there's no question as to what is CGI, what is not CGI. You can tell it looks like CGI, the actual visualization of Blade as CGI guy doesn't look right and then he's flipping so much that it doesn't, it, 15, the CGI from 15 years ago was not there and he's suddenly moving differently than he is before. So that really pulls it out. It was a decision they shouldn't have made and that's the biggest problem with the movie is some of those types of shots. It also, as a more streamlined movie, some people might appreciate the world building, the different layers, the intrigue of the second one, or the first one. That's where they go back and forth for me. Rewatching them this time, I was a little bit more distracted by the meandering of the first one. This one, I appreciated the streamlined, cool action, Ron Perlman showing up, the, wicked, uh, the witty banter back and forth, those types of dynamics. Norman Reedus is in the movie. So 
a bunch of elements like that that kind of made uh, the second one come out on top for me. Anyway, that's my take on it. I really like all three of these movies, actually. Even the bad one, it's a very watchable movie for me. The other two are just very solid movies. I'm so glad that these exist. Uh, as I said in a video I did last week, Blade is my favorite vampire character. I'm a big fan of action movies. I'm a big fan of martial arts movies. I can enjoy some monster horror stuff. Combined it all together with a solid martial arts movie, solid action movie, solid vampire movie, solid comedy comic book movie, solid monster movie in the second one. Put all those pieces together. You got a very cool trilogy, uh, even if Wesley Snipes messed up the last one. Anyway, that's my take on it. How about you? Tell me down below in the comment section, which ones did you love? Which ones did you hate? Do you find the third one watchable or do you just kind of find it uh, insufferable because it's such a mess? Let me know down below. Let's have a nice lively discussion. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. But the key thing is I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So join me down in the comment section. Let's have a lively discussion. And as always, thank you for watching.